Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this image on a cross on recycled pine. This is a good inch thick. This was a table top that I, was nicely given by one of my neighbours, and it's lovely wood. Once I've sanded it down, when I did actually get it, it was stained like so. So spend a good 10 minutes plus giving it a nice sanding down, making it nice and smooth. And I'm guessing it's pine. It could even be oak. I have no idea. I'll be honest with you. So we printed off our image here. We stuck it down to the wood itself. Now I'll just use carbon paper, graphite paper, a nice fresh piece, not something like this. This is just for video purposes. This has been on every video I've made so far, I believe. And you simply just place it underneath and go around it with a pen. I do prefer a pen. It just shows up better against the paper there than actually using a pencil. So we've gone all the way around that. This is the way I do things. You could actually stick that down there, glue that down and try routing over the paper, which I've seen people do. I did try it once or twice, it's just not for me. You can also print this in reverse, use acetone, turn it over, put it on the image, stick it down. And I believe you get a spoon and rub the back and that transfers all the ink to the wood just the same. But if for this way, we can use that again. Now that is a scroll saw pattern, believe it or not. This was made to be used and cut out on a scroll saw. So we can save that, maybe a bit further down the line. We might go for the scroll saw. But for today, router it is. So there's our little image there. All nicely ready and drawn out on the wood, ready to go. Now normally I would go around and shade in all the areas I want to remove. But obviously there's a fair little bit, so I'm just finding it easier now just to get a pen and just put marks on the bits that you want to remove, remember? You don't want to go away, come back and start taking out that section there. That will be the end of your project. Remember, we want the sections that have got the crosses on. So please take five minutes, a couple of minutes, should I say, just to mark off the areas you want to remove or the areas you prefer to leave. Once we have routed it all out, we will quickly go around it with a scroll saw. Nothing too fantastic there and actually cut out the shape of the piece itself. As always for me, CNC bits, literally just for the lines themselves. I call these CNC bits, I think they're carbon tips, some, some, the big long title, engineering, whatever. But CNC bits on eBay or Amazon for me and you'll find those easy enough. They do come with different degrees. That's basically just the angle of the cut at the, the tip there. And that can just focus in for us. There we go. That's a 15 today. 15s or 20s are my favourites. They come in 10s, 35s, up to 60s, I believe. They do have a small shaft on them, 3.175. That's the same size thickness, shall we say, shank as a Dremel bit. And that will fit your Dremel if you prefer to use one of the Dremel router attachments for your little router. Okay, for little projects like this, anything bigger, I think you would need a proper router. So to make it fit your quarter inch router, you need what they call it an adapter, reducer collet. And you can see from that, it's just a little piece of metal, a couple of slits down the side, but it's got a three, 6.35 millimeter shaft. That will now fit your router, no problem. If your router is a half an inch shank, you obviously need a bigger adapter. So we'll pop that in there and basically we're just going to go around all the lines. I would call this inset on this one. So we're going to go inside the bits, remember. So up to the line there, up to the line. On something like this, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Some of these I've gone on, I've added that extra piece there. I think there's a piece down there I've added on. And if we don't like the shape of it, we'll just alter it as we go along. Once we've gone around all those bits, all around the eyes, we'll simply pop on an end milling bit. These are fantastic. I love these. I've used on all my projects. And they will sit the same adapter, call it. So it's just a simple case of removing that and popping that into there, up to that little barrier. They do come without the barrier now. I've struggled to find them with the barrier on. I'm not too sure what the colour was like. The colour, different colours were obviously the different size of the bit, I assume. And then we will set that to the same depth. We're going to go for three millimetres, as always for me. And that is literally the same thickness as your little CNC bit there. So that works out fine if you're putting paint in or resin. Three millimetres for me. I have gone deeper on certain projects. But for this one, 
that's more than enough. So we'll do the CNC bits, we'll do all the clear out, a bit of shaping with a Dremel, with the uh, sanding drum on the end. We'll cut it out and then we'll look into staining it. And if we're going to put paint inside these rafter out areas, or just pop a bit of resin in just for quickness. Okay, let's start routing this one out. We've gone round the, all our lines with the CNC bit. It is a bit dusty, this pine wood, and it's a bit compacted into the cut itself. But that certainly won't be an issue when we go around. And you can more or less just make out there, look. We've done all our line sections. It's come out really easy, I must admit. And you notice there, you might be able to tell, I actually removed sections of the project with the CNC bit. But we have mentioned the end milling bit, so we're going to pop them on. Now, for me personally, I just used to be, prefer to use a small one. Because obviously we've got to get inside here and clear out these tighter areas. And we're going, again, even on those we've done, just to nibble a bit more. And we can alter the shape of those, remember. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the template. Don't be too concerned if you come off the line a bit and you think, well, that's not quite right. It's only you that's going to know about that. So don't be too worried. Add your own little touch on, like I did previously. We've added a couple of different bits on that weren't on the original template. So you're just making the little piece yourself, your own, if that makes sense. So end milling bits, nice one that fits on. And it's just a simple case of removing the CNC, but you will get a lot more projects. I think I'm on my fifth project with that so far on that little bit. So we'll pop that to one side and we'll definitely use that again. We'll slide that into there. You could use our little gauge, remember, or... For us, we'll pop it in the router and simply set it to that depth there and then start removing all these little crossed out sections. Let's do that next.
Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way round with that little end milling bit and everything's cleared out as should be. So we've had no issues here. It was a slow process, I don't know it was. And with these pines, where they're glued in different sections, you'll go through one section fairly easy. And then when you go into another section, it's obviously uh, not as easy. So it's just variation of the wood. But remember, it's free wood, so we're not going to complain too much about that. Now the next stage for me, you just want to cut it all out on a scroll saw. You could route out the back section of this, make it slightly wider so you have a, a larger cross. But for me, cut it out, go around all these sections here. Spiral blades. I like to use Pegasus spiral blades for me. These are ideal because they're teeth run the full length of the blade. Just see there. So we can start there and just literally just go around with basically without turning that wood if need be. The other two options are a pin blade. They come on your more basic saws. And they have a little pin at both ends like so. Remember when your blade's in the saw, it wants to feel smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know your blade's in the right way. And for the more professionals, they use these pinless blades. They are like little needles, very fine and ideal for delicate work. So it's just a personal thing, but spiral blades. Unfortunately, with my scroll saw, it's a pin blade only. So I have to get these adapter collets. Uh, Adapter clamp, shall I say, one at each end, and that basically turns that into a pin now, and that would hook on the clamp where my normal pin blade would hook. There's different types of adapter clamps, so just find one that fits your sword. So, should I say, if you want to go out and purchase a scroll saw, take one, get one that takes pinless blades, and it will just save the trouble because they are a little bit of a hassle. These when you're doing a lot of work and you're forever undoing that with an Allen key, taking it off. Putting it through your wood, putting that back on, tying it up with your Allen key, clipping it on top and bottom. It just takes the, uh, a little bit of fun out of the project, but you use what's available to you. Okay, we'll pop this on the scroll saw with our Pegasus number five spiral blade. It's an inch thick, remember this one, so it's going to be a slow, slow process. And then when we come back, we're looking to tidying it up and giving a bit of shaping on these edges. Let's cut it out first. Right, we've made it all the way round with our Pegasus number five spiral blade, as you can see from that. Now that is some uh, good inch thick wood, is that? Now a lot of people don't like spiral blades, and it's a personal thing. They reckon you don't get a nice cut on it. Personally, myself, we're not going to appreciate it from this little mobile phone I film off, but I've got no issues with that. Everything's nice and smooth inside there. Just get the right angle. The only issue you do find personally is a lot dustier and this was certainly dusty wood and on the back there we have these little nodule things to get rid of but that all that takes a bit of sandpaper and you're finished so we'll go all the way around tidy this up i am not a scroller by any stretch of the imagination but we'll give it a go i'd rather route out than scroll out to be honest but personally myself there's nothing wrong with those cuts on there but it's entirely up to folk what they prefer to use. So for now, we're going to go around this with our flexi cable again, as always. For me, just get it over here. Just a cheap, cheap eBay special. I use the engraving bits on the end. You'll get a packet of 30 of these from eBay. I will pop some links on the description. And we get one with a nice and flat bottom. And that will just allow us to go in there. Get all that dust out and get in them get nice in there and we can just shape it nicely just so it's not as 
sharp and then on these outsets we're going to get sanding drums same again they'll pop in your flexi cable no problem into the end of there and we're just going to round off these edges good bit of sandpaper and then the good old mouse sander just to finish all off we'll do all that quickly then when we come back we'll decide regards to staining or painting or resin but first of all we'll give it all a nice tidy up Okay, that's enough general tidying up for me. Once we cut out on the scroll saw with our Pegasus number 5 spiral blade, we came over with a mouse sander, and then we came in with the Dremel attachment there on the flexi cable, should I say, with an engraving bit, just clean up inside those areas. And then good old sanding drums just around the edges off there. And then we use sandpaper just to smooth it off. So we've got no sharp edges, and you can almost just see from that. Everything's nice and smooth and we're still in one piece, so that's a good sign. Now it's just a case of colouring it in with whatever we decided to use. Originally, I was going to use resin. We're basically going to spray it all black and put resin in these sections here. But I think I've done enough resin projects for now. So I'm going to try and put some stain on this and that will be this little project finished once we give it a nice little spray of varnish. Now the idea today is literally a light teak wood dye there we're going to use this on all these inner sections and hopefully we can get inside here now it won't matter if it swells out and spreads too much because for the rest of it we're going to come in with the dark teak and hopefully that will cover any excuse me any little messes that we've made along the way it does spread this dye so you've got to be a bit careful so you don't want to put it on too thickly or it will spread up the sides across the top ideally we want to cover inside those sections here so we just go slowly take our time if it just looks a total mess we have a plan b which will be filling in with resin and we can hide everything with that but we'll start off with these two little stains and we'll see what we've got Okay, that's it for our staining side of things. That went on okay, so I'm quite happy just to leave this little project regarding colour-wise as it is, as you can see from that. We've got all the sides done as well. And anything that went over, we literally just rubbed it into the back section. So staining the dark teak with the light teak. I'm going to stick with that for today. So no resin on this one. All that's left now is to spray some varnish on it, just to give it a nice shine. This will be an indoor piece, so nothing too fantastic. 151 today. I've used yacht varnish, crystal clear, basically anything I can get my hands on on the day. I've got no preference. We'll start off in here, and then I'll take it outside, give it three, four coats of this, and then when we come back, this little project will be finished. Now this, this varnish will darken that wood down nicely, and hopefully give us a nice finish. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. So a good four to five coats of that 151 varnish. Literally just to finish it off and give it a nice shine. And that's come out fine. I've certainly got no issues with that. You can just see that shine on there, look. 
And we've done the side bits. The side bits aren't so clever. I'm thinking we're going to need some kind of sealant on there first. The end cut seems to be fine, but the rest is a bit... Uh, you probably want three or four more coats on that, or definitely some kind of wood sealer of some description. We'll have to do a bit of research on that. But as far as the rest of it goes, that's fine. We've got no issues with that. So that's it. This little project is finished. So we routed out the cross on recycled pine, which is an inch thick. It measures in at 14 inches by 10 inches across. And if you remember, little CNC bits for all our line work. And then we come in with the good old end milling bits to finish off with. And then we skimmed over with a mouse sander with the flexi cable. If I just find it up here. I can rec can't recommend one of these enough. And these are just eBay specials. Even though it's attached to the end of a Dremel, I'd never buy Dremel original parts. This works just as fine and it's a lot, lot cheaper. And we had a little sanding drum on the end. That was just to round those edges off. And then a good bit of sandpaper to finish it off. Not forgetting our little engraving bits. And we use those to go all the inside. And you can just see there, we've curved all those edges off. And it just gives it a little bit of a better finish. And then for finishing wise, remember originally, we're going to pop a bit of resin in, but we went off that idea. Sometimes your projects just change as you go along. So on this one, we managed to paint in some light teak for the back section. And then we're coming with the dark teak to finish it off with. And obviously once that was all dry, nicely done. Nice 151 clear lacquer gloss finish, just to give us that nice finishing shine. And if you remember back on the back section, we literally routed out a slit there. That's three quarters of an inch thick. And that's plenty to hang that flush to the wall. If you wanted to, you could have made a nice base. We have plenty of the original wood left. And you could have that standing on a base like so if needed. But for me, this was made to hang on the wall. So there we have it. One routed out cross on recycled pine. Thank you very much for watching.